Welcome back everybody. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on the meanings of the tarot cards going through each of the suits and at first I'm going to be looking at the number cards of each suit, 1 to 10, beginning with wands, uh, the magical tool of the wand, the suit of the element of fire. So let's begin. The first of the wands is of course the ace. The Ace of Wands, this is the most rudimentary, most elemental, so to speak, form of the fire element. And it represents the power of will, uh, pure will. It represents the beginning of a project, uh, the first impulse of inspiration that we might have for a new endeavor. Uh, as fire represents passion, it can also mean the beginning of a new uh passion in our life in the form of a romantic engagement or similar, uh, but more often than not, it, it represents the beginning of a new project. Next in the suit of wands is the two of wands. Now this card, you can see the figure is holding a globe and looking off into the distance, off to a distant shore. Um, this is somebody who is thinking of uh, going out onto a new venture, a new adventure, um, but is torn between their normal life and the call to adventure, such as at the beginning of the hero's journey. And the two wands that you see here are representative of, as the wand is a symbol of will, the will being pulled in two different directions. Uh, so a decision is before the person that receives this card. Um, whether they want to answer the call to adventure. So continuing on with the suit of wands meanings, the next card in the suit is the three of wands. Uh, we see this card is very similar to the last one, the two of wands. Uh, there is a man looking out over into the distance, to the distant shore. Uh, but this is very much a development of the previous card. Uh, a decision has been made to go on a new adventure, um, but there's still a bit of uncertainty surrounding that decision um, and whether or not it's going to be a success. Uh, that's what this card is pointing to. The three is a more unbalanced number than the two. Um, so it could be a call to uh, cooperate better with people in a, in a new venture, or it could be uh, a call to uh, not be as uncertain about a decision that you've made um, to begin this new venture um, and be careful of unconscious biases and things like that. Uh, so it's it's necessary to to look ahead and stay the course and not allow uh, oneself to be thrown off uh, the, the new path that one has set out upon. Okay, next in the suit of wands, we have the four of wands. This is a good times card. Uh, this is a celebratory card. Um, as you can see, the four wands are four poles holding up a garland uh, as part of a wedding feast. Um, there's two people getting married in the center of the card. So it's very much about um, unions, it could literally point to a marriage in the future. Uh, it could also just point to uh, a celebration of life and a celebration with family, with people that one is close to, and the kind of vigour and enthusiasm that that kind of event brings into one's life. Okay, continuing to move through the suit of wands and the next card we have is the five of wands uh, this card is a bit more uh it can have a possible negative connotation to it unlike the previous one uh, but really what it represents is uh competition between people the five staves of the five individuals represent very strong opinions very strong points of view all coming together and possibly clashing, possibly competing, uh, but it's still a card of teamwork at the end of the day. So um, the five 
people in the card are still coming together uh, for a common purpose, uh, but there may be a little bit of friction in that interaction. So that is the gentle warning of the Five of Wands card. Okay, we continue our journey through the suit of wands, the number cards, one to ten. And next we have the six of wands. This is one of my absolute favorite cards. Um, I've drawn this in a card of the day reading before. Uh, it is Caesar returning from battle victorious. It is the card of the triumph, the Roman tradition of holding a triumph for the emperor who returns victorious from war, uh, which is where we get the word triumph from. It's the card of victory, um, of celebration after a long period of, of struggle in order to achieve something. Um, so if you draw this card in a deck, um, you're a winner. Uh, you're going to have some great victory that you're going to be celebrating soon. So congratulations. Okay, next in the deck, um, going through the suit of wands, and hopefully the candle won't um, burn out before we finish. This is the seven of wands. Um, so in this card, much like the five of wands, uh, it denotes a kind of a competition with other people. Uh, although in the five of wands, there's a bit of a spirit of teamwork, um, whereas in the Seven of Wands, uh, there's a bit of a power imbalance, and that changes the the relationship between the various figures in this. Uh, you've got one person on top of the hill, and the other six staves are all trying to uh, knock him off his perch, uh, quite quite literally in the case of this card. Um, so, if you are in a successful position in life and you draw this card, you may find that there are people that are, are trying to, to knock you down, perhaps take your place uh, in terms of office politics or something else, or perhaps uh, you've worked hard to gain something and you just feel like you have to fight to hold on to what you've already gained. It might not be to do with personal relationships at all, but those are some of the meanings that, that can come from drawing the Seven of Wands. Okay, going through the the suit of wands, one to ten again. Now we have the eight of wands. Uh, this is a card that represents some kind of endeavor uh, where you work together as part of a team uh, towards some kind of a social good. Uh, perhaps you take up some kind of leadership position in a project that is bringing some kind of positive change uh, in your environment. Um, but it's a very powerful card because all of the wands are pointing in the same direction, uh, which you don't always get in the suit of wands if you've seen the previous videos in this series. So yeah, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good card. Um, contributing something to the community, contributing to a common cause that has some greater social good behind it. Okay, working our way through the number cards in the suit of wands and the candle wick is holding on for dear life. This is the nine of wands. So this is a card where um, you can see that the figure has got a bandage on their head. They've got quite a glum expression. I don't know if you can see that, but um, basically, this card you will draw at a time in your life where you're feeling a bit burnt out um, and perhaps you feel a little bit injured um, physically or emotionally by how much strain you've been putting yourself under. So if you draw this card, uh, it's maybe time to think about being a bit easy on yourself. In the suit of wands in the tarot, the last one is the Ten of Wands. The will and the drive to do things that is represented in all of the wand cards, beginning with the first impulse uh, of willpower in a certain direction in the Ace of Wands, 
has now come to fruition. This person is carrying a whole bundle of sticks. Um, they've got too much on their plate. They've just, they're trying to do too much and they're exhausted. Uh, and they could drop the wands at any moment because they're just trying to take on too much. So if you, if you do draw this card in a reading, uh, it probably means that something has to give. You've probably kept pushing yourself um, to the absolute limit. Um, so please take a break. Uh, if you draw this card in a spread, one way or another, um, the period of activity that you're currently in is going to come to an end, even as the Ten of Wands is the end of the number cards in the suit of wands. Uh, so just be aware of that. And that's it. That's, that's the number cards in the suit of wands.